special greetings to you all viewers and followers of Night and Girl Nurses Association. My name is Vaidal Tinajman, a specialist nurse in liaison psychiatry and an executive member of the Night and Girl Nurses Association. As part of our regular broadcast of various mental health promotion and in collaboration with our inauguration on the 8th of October 2023, I'll be presenting to you a short presentation on mental health titled Overcoming Stigma and shame in mental illness, which can be a sensitive topic. Isn't it interesting that there's always almost a negative connotation or perspective when it comes to talking about mental illness? In actual sense, each and every one of us goes through various changes of emotions, behaviors and thought processes at any given time, and yet hardly empathize with those who go through an extreme form which would be normally classified as a disorder. As definition, mental illness is a condition which causes a disorder in people's behavior or emotions or thinking. Statistically, and this is taken from the World Health Organization, it says more than 450 million people across the globe with about 43.8 million adults experience mental illness every year Health experts have estimated that a fourth of the population suffer from a range of mental illness, including depression, anxiety, bipolar affective disorder, schizophrenia, and other psychotic disorders. Around 20% of the world's children and adolescents have a mental health condition, with suicide being the second leading cause of death among the 15 to the 29 year olds. Approximately one in five people in post-conflict settings have a mental health condition. People with severe mental health conditions, unfortunately, die prematurely as much as two decades early due to preventable physical conditions. Globally, an estimated 12 billion working days are lost every year to depression and anxiety. Despite these alarming statistics, people with mental health conditions often experience severe human rights violations, discriminations, and stigma. So you see, each one of us is likely to experience a form of mental illness in our lives, and yet it's so difficult to talk about it. Why are we afraid to talk about mental illness as compared to other physical illness? It's so easy for someone to talk about their broken leg, high blood pressure, and talk about their anxiety or depression. Unfortunately, in most ethnic minorities, it is seen as taboo or witchcraft and never spoken of. In our society, mental illness is stigmatized more than any other illness or condition. We certainly need mental health awareness, especially amongst ethnic minorities, to increase our understanding and reduce stigma and efforts to increase access to quality mental health care and effective treatments. My presentation today will hopefully talk about the various misconceptions and mental illness, how stigma and discrimination affect people with mental illness, and why people with mental health problems are discriminated against, and what you can do about stigma and discrimination. So starting on misconception about mental illness, a lot of people, especially Africans, believe that if someone has mental illness, it is because of witchcraft. Symptoms of mental disorder is quickly associated with evil. For instance, bipolar disorder and other conditions associated with severe mood swings and behavioral changes are assumed to be evil overriding that person's body. Some believe that sin can cause mental illness and that they will be fine only if they are cleansed or prayed for by a spiritual healer. People find it uncomfortable talking about their mental illness or struggles. As a result, rumors and misunderstanding about mental illness can, can run wild and falsely spread. This can be damaging in several ways and may keep someone from getting the help they need. Some may fear how others will view about them and hence wouldn't come forward or seek help. 
Others may avoid treatment because of the rumors about the type of care they will receive. This can leave many people struggling on their own and internalizing these negative views on mental illness. That could ultimately make their problems worse. Let's break this misconception and support people to get help they need. One of these common misconceptions about mental illness is that it makes people violent and dangerous. Schizophrenia and other psychotic disorders especially have a reputation of violence. People with major mental health disorders are thought to be responsible for only 4.3% of the violence in a given community. And people with schizophrenia are 14 times more likely to be the victim of a violent crime than the perpetrator. Unfortunately, people with mental illness experience discrimination, always severe when in reality, mental illness fall on a big spectrum. They can range from mild to more severe, even come and go, or even treatable if help is sought as soon as possible and with the right treatment. Mental illness is seen as a sign of weakness. It has nothing to do with being weak or lacking willpower. It is not a condition people choose to have or not have. There's a misconception that mental illness and health disorders are extremely rare. Mental illness is more common than many people think, as already spoken about in the statistics. The more popular myths associated with mental illness is that it makes someone unable to function in normal society. While some mental health disorders can be crippling, many people with mental illness are still productive members of the society. Contrary to the stereotype, not all people with mental health issues are homeless or locked away in a facility forever. Many people with mental illness hold jobs they have families, they make you know, they make it through the day with relative ease. It is a common misconception that once someone develops a mental illness, they are doomed forever. While some mental illness are chronic, um, treatment can help people learn more uh, on how to better manage their symptoms and get more control over their disorder. In some cases, Proper treatment may help people overcome their disorder almost completely. Other mental health disorders can be short-term by nature and go away with time. Some believe that treatment is scary because of the images portrayed on the media as well as past techniques. You know, there are so many misconceptions about mental illness treatment that can make people get scared um, to get the help they need. Example of the past treatments were shock therapy, um, straight jackets, padded rooms, and a mess of pills that make the patient numb are mostly a thing of the past. Nowadays, treatment usually consists of combination of therapy, methods like psychotherapy, as well as medication, if necessary, can be adjusted to avoid adverse reaction. Most patients in residential Mental health facilities also have free reign inside and are, are there voluntarily. Despite this, there is still a strong stigma around mental health. People with mental illness can also experience discrimination in all aspects of their lives. That stigma and discrimination make many people's problem worse. It can come from society, employers, the media, and even our own friends and families. You may even experience internalized stigma where you come to believe the negative messages or stereotypes about yourself. How do stigma and discrimination affect people with mental health problems? You see, nine, nearly nine out of 10 people with mental health issues say that stigma and discrimination have a negative impact on their lives. Stigma and discrimination can make someone's mental health problems worse, it can make them delay or stop them from getting help that they need. 
It can trap people in a cycle of illness if they are not able to seek help, leading to social isolation, poor housing, unemployment, and poverty. Unfortunately, people with mental illness may face more than one type of stigma. For example, they may also be stigmatized because of their race, their gender, their sexuality, or disability. This can make life even harder. It is well noting that people with mental health issues are discriminated against because of how society view them, how the media portrays mental health um, links with violence or portray people with mental health problems as dangerous, criminal, evil, or very disabled and unable to live normal, fulfilled lives. What can you or I do about stigma and discrimination? We've got to challenge stigma. You've got to challenge discrimination when you see or hear or experience it. It's time to change the way people think and act about mental illness. We've got to talk about it openly, showing someone that there's no shame or stigma. It's talking about how they feel would make a huge, huge difference. You can help others understand mental health and challenge stigma, knowing that one in four adults which can either be yourself, your family, you, you know, a friend or colleague at work. You've got to share our story. You've got to give feedback, especially on the social media. You've got to participate in research when we can. It's encouraging to hear from people with a range of mental ex experience, whether yours is good or bad or something in between. It's always good to hear those stories. Some of the harmful effects of stigma can include relax yourself, your family, your, you know, a friend or colleague at work. You've got to share our story. You've got to give feedback, especially on the social media. You've got to participate in research when we can. It's encouraging to hear from people with a range of mental ex experience, whether yours is good or bad or something in between. It's always good to hear those stories. Some of the harmful effects of stigma can include reluctance to seek help or treatment, lack of understanding by family, friends, co-workers and others, fewer opportunities for work, school or social activities or trouble finding housing, bullying, physical violence or harassment, you know, health insurance that doesn't adequately cover your mental illness treatment, the belief that you will never succeed are certain challenges that you can't you can't improve your situation. The Equality Act 2010 protects everyone from discrimination, hence we are able to challenge any stigma or discrimination. It makes it illegal to discriminate against people with mental illness when you are at work applying for a job or living one. The Equality Act 2010 helps you to use services such as hotels, restaurants, public transport, hospitals, local councils, places of worship. It also helps you to deal with organizations carrying out public functions such as tax collection or law enforcement, or even buy or rent a property. With all this in mind, I will appeal that we support those with mental illness. Let's make our society a better place to live in by embracing mental health openly. Talk about it. There is no health without mental health. Thank you. And please look out for more NNA presentations on mental health. Bye for now.